Hello everyone and welcome to Walford Weekly, your weekly EastEnders podcast where this week we'll be discussing the episodes released on the BBC in the UK for Monday the 6th to Thursday the 9th of June 2022. Did you miss us? We missed you. And someone who certainly missed you is Rob. Hello Rob, how are you? Alex Osborne, where the yes. hell have you been? I have been sitting here for two weeks waiting for you to reconnect when we when you went away after, when we were halfway through the last episode two weeks never my left hair's that gone white in the, oh. in the time that I've, I've stressed honestly oh two weeks i haven't done this for i've missed it i've missed you i've missed you i've missed oh I've missed so much now oh my god we have so much to get through this week plenty to talk funny. about this week now we have to i have to do this very quickly because we have so much to discuss believe me even in the past four minutes breaking news has hit us which yes. we'll be discussing at the very end of the podcast so it won't be such new news to you by then i expect by the time you're watching this but wait for it we'll do this very quickly this was may it's time to change the dots this was may it's now june alex we're now in are we? summer excellent we're in summer is oh, it i wouldn't know because it's oh not in living in scotland you wouldn't but no. it's, here. it's <laughs> hot trust me so we've got we've gone from this very traditional sort of picture of dot there like mm-hmm. you know five from the big and all of a sudden this is now june <gasps> ma. all right ma. Ma. nick and ma. ma lovely that's a classic ma. shot isn't it with them two together I mean, Dot's looking a bit upset i mean that's got to be their first year together surely you'd say I'd, wouldn't yeah you? that would be yeah. the early years of the dot and yeah Dot and yeah, her son, uh, Nick. Just before he became a heroin addict, happy days. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> oh, they were the days. Those they were, were the, the days. days. <laughs> and now Drug you're going to have to get that back on the wall now. Yeah, carry on. So, no, yeah, well, this, anyone still. interested? Yeah, well, this is where I would normally cut to me and fill in. But because obviously we're the new software, we can't most do that anymore. Awkward calendar. Benefit. Look at this. <laughs> look at this. Look at look what I have to go through every single time I do this. Listen, Rob, we haven't got enough. There's not enough time to talk about how complicated your calendar is. Exactly, we haven't got time. Haven't got time. We're going to quickly, quickly, quickly talk about uh, what happened the week we were away because um, you know it wasn't much story wise, but there was quite a big event that happened. Uh, Some people may have missed it. There was the Queen's Jubilee, and they had a couple of very special people on the square. And uh, Rob did keep Rob and I kept in touch with each other about how we felt about the uh, episode, and and. And we, I think we were both in agreement that it was it was a bit of fun. It wasn't, yes. you know, it, I think you can't I, really call it canon, but it was fun. Well, I mean, I, I I really enjoyed it. I think it was pretty much impossible not to like that episode. Now, you <laughs> can, you, well, I mean, regardless of what your opinion on the Royals is, all right? And I, frankly, could, I know you're kind of not a fan and you were, you were kind of thinking along the propaganda route, which to me makes no sense because propaganda is what you get in North Korea. All right. None of us had guns to our heads being forced to watch it and all like holding a glass up to the royal family. Well, you might have done. I I didn't. They couldn't. I didn't let them in. Um, But um, I just thought it was a load of fun. And to be honest, I didn't even really think it was about the royals. It was about a community having like a really magical day. Nobody Mm. died. Nothing blew up. Camilla didn't get revealed to be pregnant with Patrick's triplets. Nothing like that. Disappointingly, I thought, because I think there was a bit of a free shot between Patrick. There certainly was a spark between them, I must say. They wanted to share some of that rum. Oh, oh yeah, oh, all yeah. on the run, weren't they? Childs should have kept his eye on old Camilla because yes. I think she would have one drink away from going off to the B and B and having Wasn't a bit far. of rumpy pumpy. I mean, you would, wouldn't you? To like oh, imagine yeah. Patrick in the royal bedroom with his hat over his things, Camilla <laughs> <laughs> always <laughs> wears the hat. <laughs> <laughs> We'll always wear that hat as well, that pork pie hat. He will oh, always wear it. Um, I liked, I, my favourite part was for me where Sharon uh, or Letitia Dean looked like she was about to freeze to death. Yeah, genuinely. And had to act pneumonia. like she was absolutely, yeah, she was absolutely fine yeah. throughout while they were planting that tree for Chantel. Um, I loved but, that. Did you? I liked the tree. I, that was the yes, one part I did. I was you like, I yes, yes I did. well. It's like, I didn't oh. need to be reminded of Chantel's story. <laughs> No, well, that's not the point, though, is it? It was, it was the whole thing. Camilla apparently is a huge thing on domestic violence. Absolutely. That was what the tree was for. It was really yes. nice to just have her kind of do that moment. Gave Karen, a, 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 what I loved was um, Lorraine Stanley trying to outline Camilla. Because I know that like every time Camilla opened up, yes, it is nice, isn't it? Yes, it's right, also. Yeah, yeah. I thought the whole cast was brilliant. I loved all of them doing their, like, ch- desperately trying to stay in character. Um, some yeah, that was doing funny, it wasn't slightly it? better than others. But <laughs> that overall, was funny. What do you I do, loved- though? Well, I know it's the fact that they were they were instructed to basically be their character, and I, yes. I, I presume their lines were kind of ad lib because, Suggested. like, when Camilla <laughs> asked, yeah, when Camilla asked yeah. Zach about like, do you get up early in the morning? Obviously, talking about <laughs> ready to work the on the yeah. soap. He was he kind uh, of looked awkwardly uh, and went, uh, "Yes." <laughs> No, no. I just turn up. There's people at the gate. They say hello. Yeah. I go through. Yeah. I just walk <laughs> in. I don't even work here. 
I'm just walking on the scenes and ad lib a bit. It's great. But do you know what? Yeah, it was lovely. And I, I really liked the um, the end theme as well, which I think is now called the that... Jubilee theme. Got a new one oh, to add to the it? Yeah, I think I think it has. Like, and it was I composed by it. Simon May as well. Who, oh, it, was he, it? He, Simon he composed May? a new version for it as well. Yeah. So it was all lovely, really. I liked it. I thought it was they went big guns. They did. Big guns. And the thing is, what are your thoughts on the Royals? The thing is, that big old party that aired at Buckingham Palace, that got like 12, 13 million viewers. You know, just a, a right. couple more than these standards is getting at the moment. Just, just, no, just, just a couple a more. Just a touch. So, you know, whatever your own personal feelings are, you cannot be denied that there is still a lot of love out there for the Royals. So it seems that that was quite a good move. On it. You can are we becoming a royalist? Oh, wait, I no, didn't realise not. this was the royalist podcast, about, Rob. No, honestly, I just, I, <laughs> should I leave? I couldn't care less about the royal family. <laughs> oh, the Queen. Oh, I, I love, love the Queen. Someone wants some love, kind I do of honour. Do you want an honour for doing a podcast? I do love I do love services the podcasting. <laughs> no, I couldn't care less about the royal family. Um, you know, I don't care whether the Queen dies tomorrow or lives for another 150 years. I've got similar feelings to her as I do, like, Kellogg's. You know, it's just, it's just, <laughs> Take it just there. I, and if Kellogg's ends tomorrow, that's not going to ruin my life, you know. But for a lot of people, it's important. And I think that they serviced those people beautifully. So well they were done. very well serviced. It was, it was yes. lovely. However, yes. that was last week. Right. We have so much to discuss this week. I know. Go. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, we'll, we'll get yes. started then. Yeah. And a good place to start then would be with uh, Janine and <sighs> Linda's story. So uh, yes. a big one this week, a big stunt. Felt like oh, forever yes. since we had a stunt. Another car oh, crash, which yeah. I do appreciate, but not, not any chasing like there was with uh, Sharon in the past. Well, <laughs> I was going to ask you, when was <laughs> the last big car crash? It cannot have been Mel. Mel was the only one that I could think of. There it must has to be. Been. It in these been mad other. two years that we have just gone through. There must have been another car crash in there somewhere. It no. cannot have been Mel the last time that we had a big old car crash. No, because John Send liked shenanigans. He didn't like big car crashes. So he like used to use up all the warehouses around London. But for oh. big roadside road crashes, no, no. Every other executive producer that gets on with those. Oh, well, fair enough. <laughs> so it has to be the Mel and Sharon one, which was wow. a superb car crash. So I did enjoy that. And then I guess prior to that was the bus crash, which no one really wants to talk about either. No one talks about that. <laughs> no, no, no one talks about that. Um, but it was a great story, wasn't it? Because um, Linda oh. uh, went off to go on a, a, a retreat with Nancy, had a bit of an argument in the car. Nancy walks yes. off. Kind of yeah. just strolls off. I'm off now. I'm going to catch a train. Yeah. Home. <laughs> the thing about that was the fact that, you know, that was the moment really when Linda could literally have said at any moment, whilst, Lin whilst Nancy was slowly walking off into the distance, could any point have just said, Janine's took your money and Nancy would have stopped and at least listened to what she had to say. Instead, yes. Linda decided to go for the tried and tested method of saying, Nancy, Nancy, Nancy. All right, I'll try it a seventh time. This will make you turn around. <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> It still didn't work. One of those little sort of frustrating moments where you're just like, just have a drink. Mm. But that, you know, mm. it left Linda on her own um, in the to car. To drink. And the, to drink. Well, see, now this is the thing. This is the interesting thing here. Would she have drink? Would she have, have just driven off drunk at that moment? Because the whole thing of this, of this is, you know, Janine kind of making everyone think that Linda was drunk, being drunk behind the wheel. But would she have done it anyway if Janine hadn't turned up? No, because she'd messaged Mick and she she messaged Mick, but Janine had picked up the message. So that's why mm. Janine ended up going that's there in the true. taxi. So Linda had okay. no intention of drink, drink driving. She it was almost like a cry for attention, I guess, back to get Mick uh, yeah. back to see her and Annie. Uh, but Janine picked enough. up that attention and ended up getting the taxi. But again, I don't think Janine had any intention either to like, I don't think she planned to drive, drive no. herself into a tree no. uh it's just it, it was a cause because of them having that huge great big barney in the car about like oh, oh you don't great. need to tell me it was fantastic that barney but, was great like you've got janine sat there going you're not telling him you're not telling that linda pissed as a fart i love linda drunk I, th I wish there is a happy medium where we could linda could stop being an alcoholic but still get drunk you know because linda is amazing when she's drunk janine is well, sat there furiously saying you're not telling him you're not telling him linda's like yes i am bitch Woo! <laughs> just having a great time <laughs> Really? It's funny you should say about like Linda kind of like not being a drunk anymore because I'm jumping ahead a little bit. But I had a little joke in my head that that when they had because obviously she's in the hospital now, she's had an operation, she's in a coma, she not not have the, her memory anymore. And I thought to myself, imagine if they wrote in that her losing her memory, she lost the memory of being an alcoholic, and that's how they wrote off her being an alcoholic. That's Don't do that. <laughs> Do that. That's a good idea, Faith. That's, good That's not a good idea, Faith. Well, I, well, the thing is, I do wonder about Linda in this alcoholism thing because it doesn't take very much, does it, for her to be drunk, Linda? Like, I don't know how much there wasn't that much vodka in that bottle. I don't it's think a hip it really vodka. doesn't take that much. You know, it, it takes like a shot of WKD Blue, and Linda's got a traffic cone on her. Head. You know, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I, I would question alcoholic, just lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe our yeah. liver just can't process the alcohol anymore. Maybe, maybe. Mm. We've all been there. As we get older, it happens to us all. I Tell know. Tell me about it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Did you get drunk <laughs> you at the, the wedding? Same. Did you get drunk at the wedding? No, I was sober at the wedding. Oh, that's a shame. I was really mm. drunk the other night at my mates. We had vodka shots. I've not done that mm. since I was at uni. And now I remember why. <laughs> <laughs> I remember because you, you told me you were very drunk the next day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, we digress. we digress. Uh, yes. It's not just Linda who's an alcoholic, it's also ourselves. All of us. But, so we Deep down, we're all alcoholics. <laughs> <laughs> so that big stump with Janine, and oh, she, dragged, she dragged uh, Linda out of the passenger seat, yes. brought her around, put her in the driver's seat, as you say, mm. and then everyone then kind of accused her of drink driving. Um, that was very Janine, wasn't it? That was an exciting oh, time. Janine's back. Yes, mm. happy now. Yeah, I think Janine's back now officially, isn't she? If, if any of you were in any doubt, this is the Janine that we've been waiting for. Now, I mean, briefly, I just want to, I just want to kind of applaud people and say, good stunt. Very good car crash. I yeah, thought. I thought it's that, an excellent I, one. It was a really good one. Like The way that it was brutally just slammed into the tree didn't look fake. Not a single mm-hmm. sound effect. No slow motion effect. <laughs> oh, loved it. My and heart then they had leapt. Half, and then they half, half a redwood crashed through the window screen. Just <laughs> a bit measure. In- no, it was insult to injury, wasn't it? It, it was, was like they've had this bit. car crash. Now let's just slam oh a Oh my God, in. though. Was, there, was it just me? Was it just me? The, the, the next episode, when Janine sort of turns around and sees Linda, was it just me for... A mad half a second that just thought the log was just inside Linda's head. Just the way that they framed it. Was it just me or no. did you think that? No, not <laughs> like just a proper you. final destination. <laughs> <laughs> because they released the clip, which I thought was a bad move by the social yeah, media. I don't know why team, they did they, that. That was such a silly move because it was such a great stunt to watch in context. Yeah, so great. I think it would have been better to see maybe the argument or a touch of the argument. Anyway, I'm not a part of the social media team. Who am I to judge? However, yes, I thought the same thing. I thought when those logs slammed through, the way the uh, camera was like, yeah. positioned, it looked like it went through a woman in a blue, a light blue dress. Yeah. Linda. But even the and side so, view, it was just mm-hmm. like the log was there and Linda's head was behind it. But just for a mad second, I thought the, the end of the I, I thought the show had gone mad and just thought, well, screw <laughs> it. <laughs> Let's kill off Linda. Let's, Let's just flatten Linda. Linda's, <laughs> just flatten Linda's head graphically against a car seat. <laughs> There you go. But yes. Um, so yeah, Janine then takes full advantage of the situation. Now, I do want to talk about this scene where she was uh, dragging Linda around. Now, mm. uh, Simon Ashdown wrote the first two episodes of the week. Mm-hmm. Love you, Simon. Um, now, I, sometimes I wonder if Simon Ashdown is one of the only writers that's allowed to really chuck long, long scenes into the show. Because that scene of Brilliant. Janine kind of like sorting Linda out, bringing her around and wiping everything down. That scene was five minutes long. Slow tension. It. So but much it was slow tension. tension. It was so, so much slow tension. But it was also like almost forensic in the way that she was doing it, as if we were yeah. being shown every aspect of it. And once upon a time, Linda Janine would have looked down at the seat, looked up at Linda, pulled the face, and then the next scene, Linda would have been in the car seat. Yeah, so <laughs> I cut love... to another scene and come back yeah, to them with Janine exactly. kind of wiping her hands and walking away, exactly. looking oh, for her I'm dog. Done. Aren't I naughty? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I mean, I loved it. I love it when the show does that. Um, but it feels like there was a few things in there that could go wrong for Janine. Like, why did oh, they show us the cut? Why did they show us that. the fit? The, I love it too. But why did they show us like Linda's feet scraping on the floor? Mm-hmm. You know, there was like mm-hmm. she was wiping a lot of stuff and sort yeah. of making sure that you know there was no evidence of her being there. But you know, there's the taxi driver that yeah. kind of dropped them down. So, and who did Janine force to? mend Linda's car as so though all taxi drivers <laughs> all taxi drivers in London are also I've also got a thing for mechanics ben that's what black cab drivers ben, are well Ben didn't need to have Dave down did he he could have just rang any Dave, taxi company Dave the, the mechanic world. we'll talk about Dave we will moment. discuss Dave, Dave the mechanic we will discuss Dave he was sent down from heaven for us wasn't he <laughs> God bless We're a shallow Dave. podcast, really, aren't we? Very, Very shallow. shallow. Um, but yeah, I mean, Tuesday's episode especially, I loved. I thought Charlie Brooks was incredible this week. Mm-hmm. Um, Janine's mm-hmm. strongest week since she's been back, for mm. sure. Um, and again, loads of stuff that can just go wrong for her. And I think Janine's aware of that, because most of the week is Janine being practically on the verge of a nervous breakdown. As she sort yes. of looks around and goes, I can't believe this is working. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Um, and like, only one person is suspicious yeah. of her, which is Sharon. She knows that something yes. suspicious has oh. gone on. And she Janine knows the secret Sharon as, well. as well. I loved Perfect, all that. Janine, it? Oh, it Janine versus Sharon. Now Linda's in a coma. Sharon can step forward and become Linda's, um, become Janine's new rival for a little while until yeah. Linda <laughs> until Linda wakes up. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I loved that scene with Janine and, Linda in, uh, Janine and Sharon in the hospital, sort of like whispering at each other down the corridor. Mm. I thought that was a really well done scene. Um, yeah, I loved this story this week. It's yeah. crazy. 
It's absolutely bat bleep insane. But, but I love it. It fitted. <laughs> it it it's, fitted, didn't it? It fitted yeah. the ethos Definitely. of the show. It, it, what, you can have crazy. It, yeah. To have crazy scenes like that every now and then, it works. Yeah. And then yeah. to back it up with those very long, methodical, thought out episode as Tuesday was, mm. it worked. And so it all Beautiful. worked out nicely. And you saying about the evidence, I love that Frankie had her camera. So oh, old yeah. EastEnders. She had yeah. her camera and there's a picture of Janine putting something in the bin. It was like, <laughs> oh my God, she's done yeah. so much wrong. There's so much. And it's just like, she, it's like everything with Janine. She doesn't mean to do things wrong. Wrong but things yeah. seem to happen to her. And the way well, she then yeah. To deals with them is what makes it worse. Janine mm. can't deal with things well. <laughs> well, this is the brilliant thing about Janine and why I why I love Janine so much because you uh, like you can tell all of this week it was there's a scrap of conscience there at all times at all times no matter how evil Janine gets and um, even when she was dragging Linda Linda's body around you can see it in her face oh, I can't believe I'm doing this what am I doing what am I doing <laughs> but it's that the thing is with Janine the selfishness overrides any sort of common sense or mm. decency in her. So she's always looking out for herself. But I love that moment where she was talking to Kim. I love the fact that Kim still calls her Janice. It makes Janice. no sense. It <laughs> makes no sense. I think Janine has literally just accepted that she's always mm. going to get called Janice. It doesn't even bother like even rolling her eyes at Kim anymore. It's brilliant. Um, but I love that moment where Kim was sort of carelessly going, oh, you know, Richard and Judy, um, Mick and Linda. And, and then Janine's like, what about Mick and Janine? Why is no one talking about Mick and Janine? I love that because that's just the root of it, isn't it? That's how she amongst, feels, yeah. Amongst all of it, amongst anything Janine ever does, and this story is a prime character-rooted example yep. of that, yep, 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 is yep. the fact that all Janine ever wants is to be loved. That's all yep. Janine ever wants in life. And she will do anything to get it. And that's why she can't achieve mm. it. It's that gorgeous sort of, um, juxtaposition of someone who wants something so badly, but she goes about the wrong way of trying to achieve it. Trying so to get doesn't it. Doesn't achieve what she wants. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yes. And it's so, and it's so <coughs> sad also that the one person who does love her unconditionally is Scarlett. And yet she's the one who seems to be ignored yeah. at the moment. Like they were meant to go away and see Claire. It was lovely <laughs> to hear a mention of Claire and Ricky this week. I got a bit excited when I heard Ricky's uh, name. Yeah, see, I now thought, oh, I was going to ask you this. I was going to ask mm. you. Yeah, because she was going, oh, how much money was she planning on getting off Ricky the mechanic? <laughs> like, well, Ricky. Yeah. As if Ricky could just have, hey, I'll let you 50 grand, Ginny, and that's absolutely well, fine. When Liam's gone to visit as well, don't forget. So unless Liam is like, you know, the oh, root source of all. Bring no, Liam don't you back. Dare. Don't, you dare. <laughs> no, don't bring Liam back. Oh, God, the naked butler. But I'd love to see Ricky back. And it'd be really nice to see Claire as well. Because really, we've not Liam seen Claire in many years. That I would know. really Ricky, build up the book. I would be very excited to see Ricky back. And building mm. up the butcher seems like a very, very good idea. I think um, so, because they need someone to counteract. Like, Pat used to be... Uh, Janine's kind of like counterpoint. So if well, Pat was here now, yeah. she would kind of like be like, "Oh, I know you're up to no good, Janine, but she still, I still will guide you and hopefully you do the right thing." And I thought you, Claire could take that role, maybe she could. But I have to say, and this is going to sound insane, I know, and I'm probably going to get like <laughs> harangued on social media for saying this. And I don't mean because of the relationship that she has with Janine at all, but I don't know why. But I got real sense, real vibes of Pat and Sharon this week. Because the role yeah. that Sharon played, the I role that Sharon played this week mm -hmm, seems mm -hmm. to be the sort of situation that Pat used to find herself in yeah. quite a lot. You know, she, you can imagine Pat being at the bedside of a victim of a of a friend of hers who's you know in a coma, and Pat's one of the only ones that knows the truth and is all and is like going after Janine and saying, "Well, you can sort it out. This is your fault. You can sort it. No, I won't say anything, but you can sort it out." You know, <laughs> it, it seemed <laughs> Sharon filled that role quite well. I thought, and I could just it, it felt almost Pattish in her behaviour. Uh, it did feel Pattish. Yeah, it did feel I Pat like. <laughs> <laughs> patish. <laughs> We're having it, that patty whack. <laughs> <laughs> Have a little patish. Um, yeah, no, you're right. It did feel like that. It felt like that Pat, Pat or Sharon was picking mm. patish. One of the yeah, same. Like, one of the same. One of the same. Yeah. I mean, Janine tried, to, Janine tried to threaten uh, Sharon, uh, Sharon this week, didn't she? By saying that if, if she does admit to Mick what she knows, then she will then go to the police about what she knows about the money laundering and yeah. what she did for for, for uh, Phil in prison and so on and so forth. Do, do, do you think she knew that that, wouldn't, that would kind of fall on deaf ears and that Sharon wouldn't take any of that stick? No, I don't think... Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. I, what I did like about this was the fact that they've somehow... I don't know how they've managed this, but they've somehow managed to make quite a convoluted story with the whole sort of the stuff that was going on with Sam and Denise and the club and all that sort of mm, thing. They've mm. somehow managed to make kind of right in that by doing this story with Janine. Yeah. Because I think because they had Kim literally sit down and go, right, this is what this story is about. And this is what's happened. <laughs> <laughs> Janine for a moment looked yeah. as confused as we were and then sort of made sense of it. And then took, trying to take it to our advantage, her advantage. 
Um, I don't think Sharon's going to be able to keep this a secret for long. Um, mm. I think Sharon is going to be a key component in uh, sort of because uh, undoubtedly we are now very much on the way towards mix exit, aren't we? This yes. is the story that eventually somehow I'm I'm assuming when Janine gets found out is when Mick's going to leave somehow, yeah. and yeah. it does sort of give credence to that random mad little idea I had that Janine might off Mick at some point, accidentally I mean, or deliberately. There's those it's... photos, isn't there? They've been off filming well, up on, up very large hills. <laughs> I hope he's got his slip ons. <laughs> I mean, oh, so yes. yes, so this this could be this could be the way out for me. But do you think they? I mean, later on the show on I Ain't Want to Gossip, we've got some big news oh. that's literally just broke. We um, are like which news links, ten this week. We really so. are. I, call me Trevor McDonald because I am him. And uh, all right, Trev, and uh, and and we've got also the news of a new family coming in as well, which yeah. we're we'll talking about at the end of the show with so I Ain't Want to Gossip. But do you think that they would consider knowing what we know about a character that is going to be? Oft mm. later in the year that they would do the same with Mick as well. I'd hope not. Um, the thing is, I would, I, as much as I have always said, uh, like oh, Mick can't die, that would be a ridiculous thing to do. Why would you want to permanently lose Danny Dyer? At the same time, story wise, it would sort of make a sad sort of sense for Mick to die because, as we've always said, the, the key, the, the key thing with Mick, I think, is that we want him to have, in some way, his happy ending with Linda because that's how they came in. And it feels so we right want... to have. That's all we want, really, out of Mick's ending. If it was to ever come, Mick and Just Mel... A happy be, ending. Mick and Elle need to be happy in some way, don't they? In now, a black it cab. Seems, yeah, but it seems like <laughs> the only way that Mick and Linda can sort of end together is if Mick dies so that in some way that sort of bond has been forcibly removed from them, not by one of them cocking up and divorcing and going off with different people. Mm. So it would be sad for us to lose Mick in that way, but I would understand it. There was okay. a death that we will discuss later on the show that I perhaps won't be so understanding about, but Fair we'll enough. come to that at the end of the show. <laughs> but yes, um, in as a whole, this whole story, I cannot wait to see how this all plays out. Genuinely, this is Janine yes. back to her fabulous Finally. best. Finally, I love it. I love yes, it. Same. Yes, same, Go. same, 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 same. I yes. shall. Okay, <laughs> so uh, coming up next is the Ben, Callum, and Lewis story. So as I mentioned before we went to the break, uh, we have uh, the next story of Ben um, and his confession to Kathy. Um, again, yes. wonderful scenes this week. Um, mm. Beautifully written. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday's episode, they, they seem to dominate the Ben and Kathy story. And they they were written by, remind me. I'm, Darren you know, Little. About Darren Little, yes, yes. So they were, uh, they were good yes. scenes. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, yeah, it's a very sort of uh, Darren Little type story to be focusing on. It's one of the big mm -hmm. ones, quite an emotive thing. Um, yeah, it, yeah, I think like sort of Simon Ashdown wrote the big Janine stuff at the start of the week, and then Darren Little sort of finished off with the, with the week, meaning that we had a very strong week with two fantastic writers. Brilliant week, um, isn't it? Ugh, amazing week this week. Um, yes. Now, this I'm going to say this straight off the bat. Both of us have said our piece about this particular story. Yep. However, the thing is when no matter what you might think of the story, when we get scenes like we got at the end of the, of the last scene of the week, there ain't nothing we can complain about. As much as we'd no. like to, we cannot bitch and moan about that when we get scenes of that quality at the end of the week. Did you get emotional? Because I did. Yeah, I got yeah. emotional at the end of Wednesday's well, episode when Ben did the, the did you? His initial confession yeah. and Kathy, the, the realisation in Kathy's face. Clang. No joke. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you yeah. said the penny drop. Uh, yeah. the, the realization in Kathy's face. Honestly, I did. Yeah. I got really emotional, and I thought, "Hello, so, Ginny and Tailforth is finally yeah. going to break free here." Material, yeah, right. Mm. Uh, do, do you want my only my only complaint about for, uh, about Thursday's episode was why the hell wasn't it a two hander? They could have done that. That last scene was ten minutes long as it was. Are you yeah. telling me that they couldn't have? Sorry, but you're telling me that they couldn't have cut the Howard and Kim stuff to yeah. build on those scenes a little bit more. That was the only kind of thing I would say. But my God, that last scene was spectacular. Beautifully played by both uh, Gillian and Max. Um, loved hearing Kathy's sort of perspective about... I don't think Perfect. we've heard a massive, massive amount of... We, we, all, we all know the Wilmot Brown story, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, obviously, it came back and to rear its very ugly head a few years ago. Um, we haven't heard so much in recent years about Kathy's first rape when she was 14. So I think Which, it might have been a surprise, actually, to some viewers that Kathy's yeah. actually been raped twice. Yes. Um, yes. So when she was a kid was, and she yeah. and she had a daughter from it. I mean, that was, yes, I was so, so pleased that they brought back Donna. 
uh, and they reminded the audience of Donna. I was so pleased with that because Donna was an actual proper, you know, a character in the yeah, cast. She was of character. Yeah, proper she came character. in and and, and overdosed because she again yes. a bit a bit like Janine, I suppose. Not not the same. I don't want to start on the same brush, but like she, all she wanted was her mother's love, and Kathy didn't want to give it. And so yeah. you know, and and I love that they brought back up, and I love that that Kathy kind of openly admitted that she has regrets um, with Donna, but she also needs to move on, and she doesn't blame herself, and Ben has to do the same thing. The one thing I didn't like was that they had to get in there somehow that a Mitchell don't grass. And so when Kathy was like, oh, please, Ben, you need to go to the police. And I know it's in his character. Yeah, no, I, I get that. Yeah. But like, it felt like that wasn't really necessary. It, I didn't it sort, really but it sort of makes that. you wonder, like, does, is that, is, does that Mitchell logic really go that deep as to... I does it apply here? Who rates, yeah. is that like, <laughs> does it apply here? That, is that a thing? Really, Ben? Really? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean... It was just brilliantly played, really beautifully written. Again, long scenes this week. Like we had quite a few. They see if they start bringing back long scenes, then I will stand on the roof and scream and shout and cheer because mm. long scenes I have missed so much. Because EastEnders used to do them all the time. They yeah. never used to care about throwing out a ten-minute scene to deal no. with to deal with a to deal with a story. So why the hell have they stopped? Because they seem to, because TV viewers these days apparently don't have the attention span to watch a ten-minute scene madness as far as i'm concerned but this 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 week i think proved that those scenes still very much have a place on the show eastenders mm -hmm. is known for those sorts of long scenes between two characters and making them work and making them emotive and making them beautiful and my god this week showed that oh, um it's wonderful it's beautiful. So we have very little bad, bad stuff to say about this week as a whole. I know. So anyone anyone tuning in expecting us to be being down, then wait. At maybe at the end of the show. Yeah, at go me. on. At us. Come, Come at on. me. At me. <laughs> I will no, take but, on anyone in this comment section this week who's <laughs> <laughs> whinges. <laughs> I feel like that uh, a real kind or of on any forum. Uh, a, a, a real kind of way of kind of softening it a little bit uh, was that you saw Karat this week also talk to ben he noticed he was on medication he didn't know what the medication yes. was for but then we kind of passed it on to his concerns to kathy kathy mm. this is where kathy kind of started to kind of add things up together and knew that she nearly yeah. needed to speak to her son because that's so sorely missed as well i mean th the number of things that's happened to ben and kathy doesn't seem to give a monkey no. <laughs> and it's like that's her son but it's so nice to because it was so nice to see crap kind of like talking to ben i felt like there could have been a little bit more again because there's that relationship between them, the business relationship, but also the friendship that they've gained between them. Uh, you, again, you could argue that a lot of that kind of is off screen, but you know, you know, it's there. Um, oh, yeah. But it was just so nice to see that the people cared for Ben, but Ben still felt so isolated because of the situation he's found himself in. Um, and as, as you quite rightly said, you know, the scenes with Kathy this week were brilliant. It's so nice to see Ginny and Tailforth being okay, given something to, to do. do. I know. I it's know. A well, see, now, my question now is, how is Kathy now going to deal with what she now knows? Because um, mm. if you remember, the last time that she saw Will, uh, she saw Wilmot Brown, uh, she grabbed his balls and yes. held them really, really tightly until his <laughs> voice went up seven <laughs> octaves. So I'd like to quite know what she's going to do to Lewis when she sees him, because... Uh, well, she's already tried to get rid of him by firing him, and that got knocked yeah. down to a warning because he said, oh, I'll take you to tribunal if you, <laughs> if you carry on this business, old Kathy. All right, but I well, consider got... yourself warned. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't be doing that yeah. to my son. Mm. Um, but but that's, this was before she knew the news about A written warning this time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's in the contract, so you can't yeah, have any of that. Yeah. Um, but, so I, I don't know. I mean, I know we know... This is not really a spoiler because it's in it's it's known that Ben kind of goes a little bit a wall again next week. That's not a spoiler. That's just a general character. Trait, it's a general so character. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we know that's happening. I hope that doesn't spoil the the greatness that's happened this week. I hope that doesn't kind of taint the wonderful scenes we had this week, the softness that we had from Kathy and mm. Ben this week. But 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 not much has been talked about what as you say what because what goes forward with Kathy now because also Lewis is talking to. Callum and again yes. he's manipulating the situation he he was beaten up but he's kind of using Callum as an in so presumably he's trying to sleep with him as well well I wasn't putting... surprised mm. but do you think that he was actually homophobically attacked or do you think this was just a victim wondered that kind of punched that. him in the face yeah and he's I just wondered trying that. to explain it I wouldn't be surprised at this stage because it seems now that Lewis is just this sort of like slime ball Machiavellian type, you know, yes. it's just instantly, <laughs> hate yeah, literally instantly <laughs> hateable whenever he walks on screen. Oh, oh shame. So, do you but, think you he's know. a he did serially rape, or do you think this well, was a one off with Ben? Because that's a, something mean, that's kind of left in the air as well. I mean, I don't know the way that they 
did it makes me think that this is something that Lewis has done before. Mm. It seems, especially seen as, especially like sort of the the planning, not the planning, but sort of the way that it's all played out afterwards. Of Lewis, someone you've you messaged me. Good, good luck proving that to anybody. You know what I mean? It's sort of just. It seems like sort of like it, he's kind of taking it very much in his stride. You have that sort of one brief kind of moment um, at the end of the about that that night um, where he was sort of looking like, oh my god, what have I just done? Um, but that's all we've really seen in terms of regret. Yeah. So you know that Lewis does know what he's done, but he's never he's never really acknowledged it since. Um, what he's uh, quite what he's planning with Callum at the moment, I'm not sure. Um, I don't think he's going to do it again. I don't think we're going to have like you know both. I can imagine, I can imagine both of them going through the same thing. Please no. Yes. Please no. <laughs> um, but I don't think it's going to go that far. Maybe no. you know the ultimatum might be that he tries to do it with Callum, and then the climax of the story well, is Ben saving Callum from it or something like. Oh, that. perhaps. I don't know. Perhaps I wonder if this is going to get like it, Lewis is almost using insult to injury here, and that mm. he's de- he's obviously going for Callum deliberately to maybe really rub it into Ben's face, like what you know, because he's he's kind of always he's always pushing the blame onto Ben, and I, I don't know yeah. if in his mind he thinks that if he can get Callum, then it's a bigger and it's a bigger victory. it's a bigger victory. Yes, yeah. it to, to, for Ben's kind of psychological you know his mind kind of the way it's being damaged already so even damage it even further like he's almost yeah, making I mean, his mission now to hurt him because ben is literally sort of walking around like he's on crystal meth most of this week, just completely <laughs> yeah. dazed and sort of like you know clearly hasn't showered for two weeks and it's just apart from the one time you know after it happened which is what all of the which is what always happens you know you, you that happens to you you instantly go shower which apparently is the worst thing you can do because that rubs all the dna, DNA absolutely off you. yep he has agreed that he will report it that was the kind of the big climax of, of the great scene at the end of thursday's episode where that he said yes he will go to the police now Will he though? Is that was that just not a sort of really nice ending to the week in terms of that scene? But then he'll change yes. his mind by Monday. I can kind of see that happening if I'm honest. I can see that too. And yeah. I think the only way he will ever progress forward is if Kathy goes with him and like kind of comforts mm. him as because she's been through this before. As we all know, she's been through this. So she's been interviewed. She said oh, yeah. like when I reported it, people didn't know as much as they know now. You know, it's it, it's and so I feel like without Kathy guiding him he won't go any further himself. And I think that it is it, two possibilities here. Kathy becomes too preoccupied again and kind of goes off and does her own thing. Uh, maybe perhaps Rocky will be involved somehow and pee him off one way or another. And so he gets a bit moody and angry and then goes off in a storm. Um, so I, I think you're right. I think that he's not going to immediately go to the police. But as you say, every minute that passes, more and more of that DNA evidence is going. In fact, it may have gone. And so to prove it, it's, it's, it's terribly difficult. And... And this and is also, Warford Police. And so this is Warford Police who so are in next. He's already <laughs> facing a losing battle. I know, I know, I know. I, know. I uh, mean, the, the lighter moment of this story, if there was a lighter moment, was that we were introduced this week to Dave the Mechanic. And uh, that see, was fun. The walking sexual say, innuendo. Well, I have to say, I, I'm struggling. I, 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 he's nice, perfectly nice, nice. character. Mm-hmm. I am struggling to sort of see what the point of Dave was. Like, what was he really for? Because actually, I think... What, what, why? The only thing I can really think of him having a point as a character was the fact that what I think it was supposed to do was show us that Ben was really uncomfortable when it was just him and Dave in the thing because, you know, <laughs> oh my God, I'm, I'm stuck with a, a big burly man in a, um, in a, an enclosed space. So what's going to happen to me now? And he starts having panic attacks. I think that might have been it. But other than mm. that, they gave a lot of material to this guy. So is he coming back? Is he, oh. is he a new character? And also, he said something about her liking like little blondes, <laughs> and there is something that we should discuss at the end of the week <coughs> that implies that that might be relevant, which I also don't like the sound of. So, which is I what know. I was about to bring up as well, but I won't bring it up until the very end. Again, this is a topic for the end of the show with the news that we got from this week about characters that are leaving. Please <laughs> do stay listening or watching, depending on which way you're uh, in- ingesting this podcast. Um, but uh, <laughs> but um, I just like to I would like to say that Dave Mechanic is a wrestler. He, he does wrestling. He looks it. He looks yeah, it. And there's a does. lot of topless pictures of himself on Instagram. Which there's is a lot, isn't there? Like, never <laughs> how did you find them all? Did you? <laughs> it wasn't know, like you were Googling them or anything. No, no God, well, I just right. came across yeah. them. You know, like how... You, <laughs> you know, like how you did. Like, uh, yeah, it came across. Uh, what happened was they do this thing where um, I follow you on Instagram and I said, Alex liked all of these pictures. They just appeared on my timeline oh. like that. So there you go. Well, it's strange because I don't have an Instagram account. So I don't know how you followed me. With that. Moving on. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yes, yeah, so good. I, I like David Mechanic, but if he's got a dark a dark future, then we may not like him for very long. This is what uh, I mean. We don't we just don't like <laughs> new characters when no. they turn up. It's just the only way we're not going to get Cannot hurt. Cannot do that. <laughs> no, they either turn Cannot out to be rapists that. or murderers or terrorists <laughs> or any of the above. All three, you know, it's anything. Oh, it's bound to we'll happen see. but yes i we'll think we see. can universally say that the, the ben mitchell's story though we had our doubts i think it's being mm-hmm. handled very I well do in a way yeah i i worry that they're going to sensationalize it like they did with Chantel and gray story mm. um i hope I, I mean it's in the hands of a different team if you think about it so mm, perhaps that might kind not... of it's, mm. it's it, this is the thing this is what i kind of always wonder about really it's like what exactly is the sort of transition between producers how much of old material is sort of cleaners kind of caretaking until his new stuff starts arriving on screen just because his name is on the screen does but not it's not on the screen has... at the moment is well it, it was it kate, was on the screen for the it was on the episode. well it was on there and then kate O's decided to have her name come up right at the very end yeah <laughs> you know, almost imagine her name just appears just <laughs> slides onto screen kate like Oates. jazz hands <laughs> and just she comes on the screen in front of a green screen and goes that's me that's me Less i did that yeah give me give yeah. me a cb give me a cb <laughs> Less kate Oates. <laughs> but but it feels like kate Oates. sale in her <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, but it feels like Kate Oates is still handling the bits and pieces now because Chris Ventures' names not popped up again this week, mm. um, which I, is a bit of a shame. Well, no, what, but... which make, what, what makes me think that is because um, obviously you sort of have to work around royals, don't you? So I have a <laughs> feeling that they, the, the, you know, that episode was incredibly standalone anyway, wasn't it, for the yeah. most part? Um, so I think what might have happened is that all of that would have been filmed, you know, very much into what we're in now, which is the Clenshaw era. So Cle- so mm-hmm. Clenners would have been executive Clenners. producing that particular episode, which is why his name was thrown on the credits. But then right. his official era does not start for another month or so. Perhaps. It's looking like it's going to be August time, actually, again, with the news that we know, uh, uh, which we'll talk about at the end of the show. I can't uh, publicize this enough. Uh, uh, it looks like Chris Clenshaw's era is going to be <laughs> around August time, I think. It mm. looks like that's when we're going to start seeing the summer of Clenners. Life. This the is the Clenner's son. Da, 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 da. I thought we were going to sing Summer of Love by Steps. That would be more apt for this very gay podcast. Oh, happy Pride Month, everyone, by the way. I should have said that at the top of the show. Happy Pride Month, everyone. Rainbows and Up all the that gays. stuff. Up the gays. <laughs> Love the gays. <laughs> um, right. Uh, um, before yeah. we go on to the next story, then, uh, I just want to remind everyone that if you're watching this on YouTube, to please comment below and let us know what you think about this week's show. Um and uh, if you're listening to us, you can get in touch with us on Twitter and Instagram at Wolford Weekly or follow us on our Facebook group. Our Facebook group seems to have a real surgence of people yeah. joining us. It's really lots active. Lots of lovely so, people. And we lovely love them people. All. We and uh, we have lots of lovely discussions. So please come and have a look on Wolford Weekly podcast on Facebook and we will add you. All you have to do is answer yes to the one question that you're asked, which is <laughs> do you tough. watch EastEnders? <laughs> I, it's a tough It's test. the only question and people do forget to answer it. <laughs> Imagine if someone said no. (laughs) We probably come in anyway. Yeah, please join. (laughs) Yes, indeed. So one little tiny story that will lead us ever so nicely into Mm. I Don't Want to Gossip this week. And that was that Peter decided that he brushed himself off, went back to Wolford East and decided he's going to start running the business again. His normal arrogant self was back in business and it was nothing changed. And uh, he was desperate for staff. And Dana was like, I'm desperate for work. And so it decided to uh, start working there again, much to poor old Bobby's dismay, who kind of had in his mind the whole time that him working with her was going to really upset her and cause her distress. But Donna was like, nah, you're all right. However, (laughs) the main reason we're talking about this is that she got some big news. And that is that her brother Aaron has been sentenced all off screen and he's going to prison in Newcastle. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about uh, Aaron, uh, well, with the character, the actor Charlie Wernham, whether he was going to end up staying on EastEnders or not, because he's obviously doing the spin off of Bad Education, a comedy on BBC. And the answer Three. is no. <laughs> and exactly that. And exactly that. Do you feel yeah. sad that this has happened? Uh, yeah, terribly. I think uh, a lot. Uh, we did a quite a bit of complaining and stuff over the years. There has been some great stuff over the past couple of years, but there's been stuff that we've moaned about. And I have to say that I thought this right wing extremism storyline was one of the strongest storylines of the past two years. So it actually yeah. is a real shame that this one seems. Clenners like, clearly wasn't a fan. So it's been, I mean, this is about as, it reminds me of, do you remember Donna, um, and, and, uh, who was trying desperately to have a baby, wasn't she? 
Yes. Uh, and she, uh, so that was quite a big storyline uh, during Dominic Treadwell Collins' little era. Like, you know, Donna trying, trying to try and have a baby. And then Sean O'Connor came along. And Donna literally had one line where she said, Yeah, I've decided I'm clearly not meant to have a baby. And it was never mentioned again. No, again it sort yeah. of reminds me of that, doesn't it? Because it was just kind of like, Yeah, that's done. Don't ask us any more questions. <laughs> it's done. Um, I have to say, I mean, we theorized, 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 we, we hypothesized. Uh, that this uh, story very much got uh, chopped to pieces at one point during the process, didn't it? Pretty it much over New Year, like, eh? Yeah, and I think it never really sort of was allowed to pick itself back up again. Like They no. tried. The, there was clearly some other stuff that was meant to go on with Aaron, because otherwise, why did they kind of keep having him pop back and in, in, in giving those little scenes? Mm. So uh, clearly this storyline was supposed to be a lot more than it actually was. I think it's a shame that it wasn't allowed to sort of be what they wanted it to be. I We could just be, you know talking rubbish but it does seem that there was meant to be a lot more of it and it just at some yeah. point they just cut it and decided not to go with it which is a shame, it was I watered think. down i think it yeah, felt watered massively. down didn't it because it kind of it, the, the the ending to it where he ended up going to prison kind of felt very rushed um but i, I, I do so think, rushed, I though, think do you know what the best thing is apparently there was a prison in newcastle <laughs> Really? No, I didn't know this. Was, no, neither did I. Apparently, I saw online, someone said, you realise there isn't a prison in Newcastle? Oh dear. <laughs> so, oh dear. A, they could have just have set up north, couldn't they? They I mean, could have set up north. I mean, Newcastle's a big, Newcastle is a big city. It's fair enough to assume there might be a prison around there, but apparently there's not, there's not a prison there Clearly there isn't. Newcastle. Clearly there so isn't. So that's a shame. That was unfortunate. Oh, but... oh dear. Oh no. I feel bad there for the writers there. I that said it was. That was, really un- that was really unfortunate, wasn't it? <laughs> A little exactly. bit unfortunate, but then we are in, living in a world of fiction. There's no such place as Walford. So maybe... Yeah, there is now. There is in a that new, world. There is, a, there is now a new a prison in Newcastle. They're building one as we speak. Been off waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Aaron's the one building it. That's that's mm. the, that's the story. That's, that's his story punishment. We're see. Build a prison. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of people did argue that there was very. It would have been very difficult to give Aaron a redemption. Um, we kind of mm. counter argued, saying, "Well, they did it with Stuart." And then people would kind of argue, yeah, but Stuart wasn't a racist. <laughs> so it kind of, you know, there, there is there is that there, which is psycho, fine. but not a racist. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's, it's the... two different kettle of fish. But yeah. and also the fact that Charlie Vernon wanted to go and do something, a different project, that kind of was the final nail in the coffin, I feel yeah. like. It's a shame. But... It is a shame. Yeah. And so now, here we yes. go. I mean, Leads like I said, beautifully, beautifully into... into I ain't one to gossip. And you know me, I ain't one to gossip. So, as Rob said at the top of the show, just before we started recording, um, we Spoiler had... Spoiler alert. Oh, a massive... You, Spoiler alert. Past, in fact, the next 20 minutes, if you are a spoiler phone, go away, frankly. Thank yeah. you for watching, but thank you very much, goodbye. Because we thank have you. a huge amount thank of you. information that yes. we are about to divulge that has been released, uh, and you may not wish to know it, because um, it very much seems that Clenners is making his mark, doesn't it? He's Clenners has officially that. arrived... He is dropping the sacks. <laughs> Alex, please relay this news that we received and, and looked at literally four minutes before we pressed record. So exactly, exactly. So here we go. So the, the, what we already knew was that uh, the actress who plays Lola is being axed in a very mm-hmm. dramatic way. Um, it's only, it's only, it's unconfirmed. So it's not been confirmed that this is how she's going to exit. But apparently, she's going to exit in a coffin one way or another. So uh, that kind of leads us to kind of theories of what the where she may be exiting. Um, obviously, Dave, the mechanic, as we have mentioned earlier, likes blondes. Yes. So we discussed, so I, I feel like we should quickly discuss <sighs> that. So do you think that could be, so she's on a dating app. She's kind of yeah. trying to flirt with people. Again, it's quite a current story, you know, topic based. You know, issue, they like, do issue, enjoy them. all fall issue, down. Issue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lola falls exactly. down. Um, <laughs> she will. Yes. It, yes, the, the, the talk of the town is that Lola is going to go on a dating app and is going to basically meet her end via some nutter that she meets via the social media app and that's going to be the end of Lola. Mm. Um, I mean... Uh, it feels like they don't need to do it. The only reason I can think that they're going to do it... Well, the only reason I can think they have to do it is because they want to keep Lexi in the show and perhaps the only way they and can do that is You know where she's going, by... don't you? Oh, they should go for Balam. Of course she will. Yes. Why wouldn't she go to Balam? Why wouldn't she go to Balam? <laughs> reasons, of course. Um, uh, so, so that's it. This is it. It's, it's 
arguably fan service. Lexi needs to stay with Ben because Ben is the king of the world, but you know, whatever. Um, but and Lola. Would Lola leave Lexi realistically? Would Lola leave Lexi realistically? Probably not. So, how can we no. keep Lexi on the show and yeah! <laughs> kill her off? <laughs> I know, but I do feel like they could have done something. Seems Perhaps a she, shame. I don't know, a job somewhere or traveling, yeah. maybe go off to. To get Our boyfriends back. moved away, yeah, anything really could anything. have come and gone. That would have been a nice thing for Lola, sort of just to pop in every now and again, every ten years, just as Lexi starts It'd university. Even next time we see her, or possibly <laughs> yeah. even Lexi's funeral. The way it goes these days, who knows? Um, I, t- I mean, I think it's a shame. Lola's been around for a while. Um, I want to say like um, early tens, maybe was when Lola first arrived. Um, yeah, it must have been because she she was pregnant or giving birth to Lexi when the Olympic torch was being run around. Yes, and that was twenty twelve. Yes, um, I do think it's a shame. The loss of Lola herself as a character is, I think, as much as I like Lola, I like Lola as you know, as much as I like you know Betty down the shop who I have a chat with every now and again. Right. You know, nice nice woman, nice character, not a massive component of the show of late and hasn't really been since she returned in the grand scheme of things. The Isaac story, as we have said quite on quite a few times, I think was a really strong time for her as the almost the mm-hmm. making of her and sort of matured her massively. Um, but then Isaac sort of went. So did that sort of kind of put the kibosh on Lola as well? Like felt like you, it, didn't it? That was your, that was your chance to have a touch on a life. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I think killing her does seem unnecessary because it's kind of like another young woman that's going to die. Yeah. Uh, and, and another young woman that's going to die that's connected to the Mitchells as well. It's but like, and also another young lady, if it, if it is to do with an app, is going to die from, you know, from seeing a man. It kind of it demonises de- like, relationships. Yeah, all men are evil. All of them. It, it, yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, for me, Lola, Lola was nice in theory, but never kind of got pulled off right if you know what i mean i feel like she could have there could have been more with her um and but she was never given the opportunity that's that's yeah, what I, I felt with lola and the thing is i think daniel harold is a is a great actress as well like yeah. she, you know on the rare occasions that she's given a crumb to do something mm. substantial she delivers so i think it's a shame to be losing her um mm. whatever happens to lola without i think what we should point out is that we 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 kind of know that lola's been axed the death thing is sort of the only real thing we've sort of seen as confirmation and that was from the sun i think it was so that's it's it's not been it's not been confirmed the death thing or nor her acting to be fair but i think that it's not no one's come out we know now now. (laughs) no (laughs) not about um so yeah um but and i would also point out that the sort of um the, the idea of her dying via a social media dating storyline has sort of been a case of people kind of putting two and two together. So again, we don't And really coming know. up with Dave the Mechanic. And coming up with Dave <laughs> the Mechanic. Poor Dave. Poor, sweet, innocent Dave. Dave. Who, Dave all right, Dave. Who, uh, all right, Dave. I like lawns. Yeah, all right. Have a sandwich. Yeah, like chips. <laughs> Savaloy. Oi, oi, oi. Why not? Savaloy. Uh, so it, it could well be that Dave has sort of been uh, painted, you, you're going to kill Lola. Um, so I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But we do. Uh, yeah. So I, I think we both think it's a shame to lose her in that way. It seems unnecessary to lose a nice character like that, especially if mm. it's literally just going to be a another issue storyline that's sort of going to be said and then. That's it's it. like a shame. It's going to be a death. That's all yeah, for me. I, I don't know. mind issue storylines. As why does everyone have to die? <laughs> yeah. Why does everyone have to die, Rob? Um, I've got a few comments on Twitter that I'd like to read yes. out. Uh, one from Sarah Chandler, who said, "I couldn't see much of a future for Lola, but I don't think killing her off is the right idea." Sean Slater is shown sporotic, sporat- sporadically, not sporotically, <laughs> sporadically. <laughs> why can't they do that with Lola for a bit until they find something for her? Uh, Richard Duggan says, I don't understand the obsession with characters only being able to leave the show in a coffin. Killing them off feels so lazy. Uh, Carl Haslan has said, agreed, plenty of storylines Lola could have been given if only they were being shared around equally. Unfortunately, I suspect even her death will be all about Ben. Why kill another young female <laughs> character, though? Does the show oh, never man. learn? I know, I know. It's not, it's, it's, the agro fair, it's not we, his fault, is it? It's not his <laughs> fault. The poor Ben and the aggro that we give Ben, it's not his fault at all. In fairness, in fairness, what this may do is actually give Jay something to do because Jay and Lola have got quite have, have got quite a historic relationship mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, the length of the time that we spent on screen together. Billy which should give Billy something to do as well. So that's, yes. that's exciting. Jay and Billy, Lola's death may give two kind of underused characters quite an emotional time. You reminded me, it. you reminded me, someone actually tweeted and I laughed my head off. They said, imagine a world where Lola is uh, killed off and not Billy. <laughs> I thought to myself, yeah, imagine That's... that world. <laughs> well, 
I, you Let's know, that's um, you. I know you don't like Billy. It's we, but I, to be honest with you, I kind of think that we need to leave the Mitchells alone at the moment because they've not recovered since Ronnie and Roxy died. Thank you, Sean O'Connor. <laughs> Um, oh no, God. I will never get over it. So don't Leave Sean O'Connor alone. No, I will not. Um, so, um, so I kind of think that you should. Uh, they don't, we don't need to be killing off any more Mitchell sort of. I know no. she's not an official Mitchell, but she is within she that is. sort of brood, isn't she? She's in the, the family. family. She's in the family. family. Um, so I think it's a shame to lose Lola in that respect and lose that another component of the Mitchell family. Mm. Um, uh, but yeah, we will have to wait and see see what yes. happens. It could well be that she just leaves quite happily, meets a man, and goes on a cruise and never comes back. And just That'd be nice. Her and, her and Mo have a little spin off where they go <laughs> off on adventures together around the Caribbean. Lola and Mo. That'd be, that'd be, be great, like, wouldn't it? Oh, God. Yeah, that'd be a nice comedy. It'd be like Birds of a Feather. <laughs> yeah, they go away and they solve crimes around the Caribbean. I would love that's, that. That's fine. That would I'll be take lovely. That. That'd However, be unlikely. And also not the only one that we're losing. It well, this because... is Yes, this is where we're heading now. Because as, I, as we've alluded to loads of times, before we start recording, four more people have four. been given the act. Four. Four. four! Are you ready, kids? Anyone who doesn't oh. know this, get ready. Because some of these are quite deep cuts. Mm. We're losing Jada, played by Kelsey Callendine smith We're losing... Dana, which feels feels necessary, it feels necessary, doesn't it? To be honest with you, yeah, this yeah, Harvey isn't attached to that exactly. Played mm. by Barbara Smith. We're losing Peter, which doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Played by Dale Hudson. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, and we're losing Stuart Highway, yes. played by Ricky Champ. That's that's a shocker. Nuts. And I will never I stop think. laughing if Stuart gets axed and Vi survives. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine again. Imagine a world where Stuart and Zach and Vi stays. Me and Clenners, he will be, he will, he will, be, he will be risen above Dominic Trenwell Collins at my list of favourite producers. If that happens, I tell you that it won't happen. Vi will be gone as well. Let's be honest. Um, yes. So quite a list there. So that's five mm. characters announced to have been axed straight away. I almost feel like there's going to be more as well. I feel like there is quite more. because there is a few sort of. It's because let's be honest. If he's Aaron's gone and dana has gone, is Harvey? gonna stay around really how well, is why would they delay go? why would they delay that 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 well, announcement could, well this could be the beginning of you know maybe this announcement i mean who was it now where have you got this from is this a what what is the news site that you've got this from it is know. the sun it is the sun newspaper yes well <laughs> but no they, to be fair they they, although well, they like to leak information before everyone else which they shouldn't they mm. do tend to be quite right and i think this is actually confirmed information i believe this is confirmed <laughs> Well, I mean, it's... I mean, let's go through them one at a time, okay? Mm -hmm. So, Jada, shame for the actress because she's only just started. So that yeah. seems that seems got a TikTok shame. career ahead of her, though, eh? Well, that's all right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great dancer. Um, oh, yeah. See her on Strictly in a few years. Um, <laughs> bless her, Probably. that wasn't her fault. That wasn't her fault. That Again, not, not, her her fault. Fault. not her fault. Not her fault. Not her fault. So that seems a shame, you know, that because I, I, I quite I was quite liking. I mean, yes, she was a pain, you know, she'd become a pain recently with, you know, trying to pretend that Zach kissed her and all that sort of thing. But it was a nice component in a new direction for Sharon. So, you know, yeah, let's, yeah. it seems a shame to lose that. Um, I'm just going to plug myself in because I'm about to run out of battery. But um, who, who else was next? Dana. Well, like, should, I, should I say yeah, about you, Dana? You carry on. What, you I'm talking about on. Dana. Um, Dana, about Dana. Dana, Dana. Dana, why are you having a bit of a shuffle? Dana yeah. uh, does feel like a great shame because I love the, the the chemistry between Dana and Bobby. Um, but uh, I mean, like we said, as we said already, you know, now Aaron's left or is leave or has left. It doesn't feel mm. like there's much for him, which this is why I'm I say I'm surprised to see Harvey staying. It feels quite surprising with that one for me. Um, Peter, yeah. I'll be honest, Peter's not surprising at all. He's never it's clicked. Not, I'm sorry, he's, he's not, not done clicked. a lot, has he? It's not this done a version lot. of Peter um, really hasn't. It's not done a lot. Um, uh, it's, I mean, again, it's a kind of. I, I wouldn't be surprised if in a few years we get sort of. You know, a producer might say, "Right, let's give Peter another go," and maybe that, and maybe that might work. But uh, yeah, I don't know what I don't know what their plan was with Peter. I think they were just trying to sort of build up the Beals again, which was a nice idea. But then they sort of didn't really do a huge amount with it, um, mm. and yeah, it, it, it kind of just didn't work. So that's a shame. Uh, but you know, that that's that. Um, the fact that Peter and Dana are leaving together is interesting so are they going to sort of go off and just bobby's just gonna be left broken hearted sobbing i wondered that too because again we like we said spoilers at the beginning because we know next week that something happens between dana and peter so i see, feel now, like yeah i mean being see, tread see now interestingly i actually thought that this actually sounded like yeah I, barbara smith i think has said is it barbara smith it is barbara 
Barbara, Barbara, Barbara Smith, Smith, yeah. Barbara yep, Smith, yep, yep. yeah. Um, she said, uh, oh, people are going to hate this storyline. Like, it's going to be divisive. And actually, I didn't, uh, about the idea of Peter and Dana sort of becoming a thing, which is something that, let's be honest, we've been, expect- we've been expecting pretty much ever since Peter and Dana laid eyes on each other because that seemed to be the sort of role that this Peter was doing. Yes. Um, and actually, I didn't hate the idea of Peter and Dana because it seemed to me, it's never really settled right with me that Peter and Bobby are okay with each other. And it, I was yeah. looking forward, actually, to having another reason for them to be at loggerheads. Because no. I I think that Bobby, the, the Peter and Bobby thing should should have been like quite a long runner. And like sort of that, that resentment should always have been there. <laughs> Again, it felt like the era, though. They, they kind yeah. of picked it up, used it for a little bit, juggled it about yeah. a bit and then dropped yeah. it again. And and thought, okay, we've it. done we've done that now. So let's yeah. just move on. No, I agree. I think there could have been more between Peter and Bobby. There's like, there was so much to venture between them two and find out, you know, why they mm. are the way they are. Um, so I felt I felt that was a that was a shame. A missed opportunity. So yeah, wasted wasted potential there, I think, with uh, and, with this Peter. And, yes, and Stuart, Stuart. Who actually is quite a popular character. Yes, he we, is. We often wax lyrical about Stuart and um and everything to do with him, but apparently his his time is now so then his time is short. So does that mean that he's gonna die from breast cancer, possibly then? Or Oh yeah, that's something we kind of talked about. But then it's another death. <laughs> everyone dying well at least i've set this one up (laughs) that's true that's true i just i just thought that her that rainy was going to choose roland over stewart and that Mm. would be his exit that's why i thought thought of it um but no the cancer i forget the cancer's there isn't it that's that's a ready-made kind of finish to the story isn't it and if then that would suck for poor old stewart yeah, mm. but if he decides to go against his key, it's very easy to kill him off from this point onwards, really, isn't yeah. it? Like it's yeah. it's it's not like they have to kind of do bend over backwards to accommodate an exit in, in this. It's sort of ready made, not. waiting for them. All Clenners really needed to do was sort of sneak into the script room when all the lights were off and go, just change this ending. <laughs> Get the text um, out. Yeah, just say, and uh, no, he dies. <laughs> um, so yeah, quite a lot to uh, to process there now. Uh, as one as five doors close three more have opened well, they certainly have yes you're quite right Rob. look at you rob with these links and we're gonna two quick... weeks i've had to practice these links <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna talk about the new family i say family it's a family that does one of the components already exists and that's yes. mitch who'd have funked it who'd have funked that they were gonna yes. make mitch Built Good. his family, but so uh, there's his brother who's being introduced, which is Avery, playing played yes. by Omar Lee Fook, and then his two nephews, who is Felix, playing by Matthew Morrison, and Finley, who's Ashley Bame. Um, we did a video about this actually, uh, yes. when the news broke, uh, which you can watch, which I'll put a link up there. But don't forget to finish, not much longer now, you can finish watching wait, this and then go to wait, that video in a minute. Hold your horses, calm yourself down, kids, calm yourself down. Calm we have a 10 minute scene going on here. So, um, the <laughs> quote that they said is, is a surprise. <laughs> We are written by Simon, Simon Ashton. If you want I to write wish. for us, please I feel wish. free. I wish I was written by Simon. No, because we probably, but one of us would be dead by now, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> or driven into a tree. <laughs> or and drag into you tree. into the passenger seat. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, no. So, a surprise arrival. Mitch shows support, which uh, Mitch shows support for his nephews, but a tense relationship with his brother. So, obviously, it's being built up that um, you know there's going to be a, a maybe a history, a, a, a history between him and his brother. The nephews may not know about. Um, like I say, I'm surprised. Mitch is one of their, Mitch is one of their dads, then, isn't he? That's, <laughs> that's the oh, maybe. That comes to my maybe. Head. But then one of them doesn't that... know who their father is, and yet, and what <laughs> the brother in it makes about a difficult relationship. Hmm. <laughs> actually, isn't one of them actually isn't one of them half brother as well? I'm trying to remember Probably. the article. I think one of the nephews they're, the they're not just blood read. brothers. <laughs> No, I, I did the article month, uh, months ago, oh, week, okay. a few days ago. I don't remember oh, okay. things I did a few days ago. Right, um, right. <laughs> I just have brief notes. Um, but I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure that I remember that they're half brothers, uh, a Felix and Finley. Mm. So anyway, well, anyway, don't quote me on way. that. Um, I mean, yeah. So I'm surprised that Mitch is getting an extension. So um, am I, so to speak. <laughs> um, but I will say, I think that after um, Grey Week. Which he, in which in he did which redeem even, himself. In which even you were kind of like Mitch was great this week. I loved Mitch. I love Mitch. Yeah, Mate, yeah. I think I've, ever since then I've sort of been like, well, I hope he gets the opportunity again. Yeah. Um, to show, to sort of show his worth as a character, um, and for Roger Griffiths to do what he can clearly do. Um, so I welcome this. I think it's quite exciting. I love I love it when we get a, gr- a new group of characters in. It's always exciting to sort of mm-hmm. learn about a new group of people, a new group of characters, kind of put a little bit of life into the show. Um, their pictures, I mean, they all look quite individual and quirky, don't they? Especially, is Felix the one, the tall one with his hand on his hip? 
I think, yes, I believe so. I just want to say that you say like their, their pictures, they look all a bit quirky. This reminds me of the Panasar brothers. And I remember when, when Ben and I were doing the podcast and they got introduced and I said, oh, Jax looks interesting. Oh, what we'd worth find out later well, on in that show. <laughs> yes. So I hope, I hope they're, they'll be a bit stronger. Let's hope, let's hope, well, let's hope that they don't remind you of the Panasars in that respect. No, no. Um, yes, yeah, so... We've got that's that's still to come, and that's uh, that's apparently according to you know little things from writers and stuff on Twitter. That's all being that's all started at the moment, and uh, they're they're on sc- they're on set now, so we'll see them on screen uh, in a few weeks' time. So yes, go on. Well, I was going to say. So do you think that that uh, there might be two characters who are in the danger zone? And when I say two characters, danger I'm talking zone. about Karen and Bernie. I don't think. Well, I, no, not really. I, I, it no? doesn't. It doesn't. I don't. I don't think they're. Well, what's the point in keeping Mitch around? On why would they? Because like, Mitch has now got this new family. Yeah, I know. So but he would doesn't they need decide, Karen and Bernie there anymore. Would they, des- would they decide to get rid of all the other tailors and then just keep Mitch just to give him this? It doesn't seem like. It just feels like they're, they're, they're already. Move. I know, but they just don't. They don't. They feel like they feel like bit parts now already. Like other than well, like here and there. I mean, Bernie's Bernie's probably got more of a purpose. And I don't want to get rid of Karen. I but love even Karen. Ha- but has she though? Because if Stuart's going, how much longer is this baby storyline going well, to go on for? Exactly, and they're, they're they're adopting the baby now as well. So that's what I mean. They feel like loose parts on the show. But and uh, with, now know, Mitch has got that ha- family unit being added. Yeah. His brother but and then, his dead nephews. At one point, you would have called Mitch a, a loose part, and now apparently, and now he's. Been I did, given but a I did. Well, this is my point. I didn't choose to bring a purpose in for. No, I know. But, <laughs> but no, but that's surprising. what I mean, though. All yeah. the characters need to have a purpose is to be given a purpose. So no, you're you know, absolutely right. All but it I think takes Karen is for the Karen, tailors to be yeah. given a story and for them to ca- have the- something to do. Yeah, but do you think the Taylors have had that story? I mean, Kino and like, you know, and all that guffins that happened with Chantel. And one by one, they've kind of just pitted out. And I just feel like Karen's purpose is now gone, unless they were to introduce something new. I mean, the only thing I could think of is perhaps Avery and Karen have a past, maybe. Well, let's well, well, think about this then, because, like, obviously, so, I mean, Kim, um, Karen and Mitch have known each other for years and years. Mm. So presumably, Karen is going to know these people. Yeah. Uh, so there may be a bit of history there. Who knows? Possibly. Maybe they had. Maybe there was. Maybe there was a thing. Um, you know, with her and, one, and the brother, or, or something. I don't know. I don't. I or doesn't, the it, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily. <laughs> so yeah, maybe. Good old Karen. <laughs> uh, it doesn't necessarily say to me that Karen and Bernie are automatically defunct now just because Mitch has got more to do. So okay. I don't know. You may be right. You may be absolutely right. I'm not. Dis- I'm not discounting what you're uh, that at all. Um, I don't mind if you does, did, Rob. Well. Um, it, just make me think that, it just made me think, however, you know, Stuart's gone. Let's be honest, Vi's not much longer for this world than is she because, no. I mean, as much as I personally enjoy the character, you don't lose Stuart and then sort of, unless, you know, he's, she's kept around for Callum because remember, he she is in yes. as well. Yes, oh, yes, yes. I buzzing around my head. Um, <laughs> so. Well, one thing I would say then, just I want to clean, clean, cleanse to here, is that please don't get rid of Rainy. Rainy's got so much more to give. I love Rainy. Please keep Rainy. She's one of my favourite characters. Please keep Rainy. Just for me. Yeah. Do it for me. I <laughs> I'll marry her. Like I'll go on the show and marry her. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like it's not over. Yeah, I think mm. that we might, this might just be the beginning of uh, Clenners and his little pickaxe. So, so uh, we we shall we shall see. We it may well be this time next week we'll we'll be discussing a whole new a whole new five other characters that have been axed in the week. Yes, it feels yes. like that sort of. Uh, that sort of time at the moment, doesn't it? It's exciting times, though. I love it when yeah. a new executive producer gets introduced because it's the un- the unexpected, the kind of the, what's going to happen, who's going to come in, who's going to come out. And I feel like that when you know when an executive producer comes in and doesn't do this, I feel a bit disappointed. I like that. Uh, yes, mm. it's nice when executive producers can use the stock that they've been given and can use the actors and the and the roles and so on and so forth. But sometimes they want to give it their own stamp, and I don't blame them for wanting to do that. It's and so I'm clearly what he's doing. So and he's clearly doing that. So I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see where this is heading. So that's why I say July, August time when we start seeing the Clenshaw era. Yeah, I mean the summer good. is the time to do it, really, isn't it? Because it you is. can sort of because it's a traditional Traditionally, the sort of time of year where you know viewers aren't as high as they are in other periods of the year. Well, so, or they put them as box sets on iPlayer. <laughs> all that, yeah. So, so uh, you uh, sort of prepare yourself, and then you start talking about all big stuff in September leading into Christmas. So mm. it's 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 sort of the preparation period. This is the time where you start playing your little dressing up box, isn't it? So we will see. We will see what happens. 
Exciting times ahead, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, do let us know in the comments section below uh, what you think is coming on the horizon uh, with these axings. Let us know what you think of them and what do you think of the new stories. Lots and lots to discuss this week. Let us know your thoughts uh, by contacting us on Twitter and Instagram at Walford Weekly. You can find us on Facebook at Walford Weekly Podcast. On YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell to get notifications about our spoiler videos. And you can find listen to us on Apple, Podbean, Spotify or any of your favourite podcast sites. Email us at robwalfordweekly at gmail.com or Alex Walford Weekly at gmail.com. I missed this. Two whole I weeks I've been away. It's been fun, hasn't it? Um, hey, Eck. <laughs> I, think, I think everyone should say hello, Rob, as well in the comments below. Everyone put hello, Rob. Hashtag we missed Rob. The whole, all the people that said how much they missed me last week and I missed you too. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. The handwriting was very sinister, though. They looked very mm. much like your handwriting. The letters mm. that came in, so I'm not quite sure. Uh, you know, that's how that's how obsessed my fans are. They just want to be me. <laughs> just want to be you. They just yeah, want to be you. you. <laughs> so yes, do all of that. Let us know what you think of everything that's going on. Loads to discuss this week, and we cannot wait to hear from you. We will be no. back at the same time next week, and frankly, God knows what we'll be, we'll be discussing by then. Who knows? Until then, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. Have a lovely week. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.